Here's Dave. I'm gearing up. Shovel, I'll carry it. Hey Ryan. Yeah. I thought you were wanting a wetsuit. <laughs> okay. Clear a what hole pipe. Get in the cave. You would have been better to just push them down first, but I, I'll push it ahead of me is what I'll do. I can get it, Dave. Okay. Just deal with that blue one you got and don't worry about this one. Hey, Ryan. Oh, ho, ho, misty. It is cool. Do what? <sighs> I don't have any idea. Do they want this left open? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Damn, it sounds like rocks it. And I was like, no, nah, it's good. Yeah, right. well, there's another way out. It's just a little bit of a... The dig. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then there's no car at the other end of it. Yeah. It's a problem. No cell phone. Recently, uh, Gary Robertson showed Adam Craig and I the entrance to Bales uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving when we were down here. And when I looked at it, I said, wow. Uh, so rocks just fell down uh, and, and it was blocking the hole and he said, yeah, essentially. So I said, well, what do you think, you know, if we uh, try to work on uncovering it? And he said, sure, you got help. So we made three trips to unco uncover and uh, Gary's lead and the dog, Terry Creighton and Rand's leadership, we intersected the cave passage, what, about the middle, Rand? Right dead smack center, dab dead center, center in the middle of the passage and, uh, yeah. and then we came back one week and installed some lights of culvert and the first trip in here Rand noticed this passage on the side that he can tell you about. Oh, well I just, you know, I, I once I got in here I couldn't stand it so I crawled back here and stood up and I felt this, I mean it was cold as shit outside. And I just felt this big warm breeze just blowing in on my face. I'm going, where the hell is that coming from? Because I don't remember anything like that. And so it was that dig. I mean, it was just up the top and it was about this high and about this wide. And it was just, it was moving probably 10% of the amount of air that the rest of the passage was blowing. Is that a fair estimate, would you say? Anyway, it was, it was a lot of air. Extremely warm air. Yes. So... Um, I took a couple shovels full out of it and you could see that it just kept going and going and going with that amount of warm air there had to be something back there and close to the entrance so we dug on it last weekend I guess and uh, we dug back what 25 30 feet yeah and uh, you know it's looking more and more pushable I would guess by a smaller person and what we what the uh, Gary and the dog think is that as we get up toward, that it was the original main uh, river route originally. And then when you look at the size of it, and it's, if somebody shined their light up there, you can see that there's, there's a solid piece of rock wall here on the right, but you can't find anything on the left here. Mm. You know, so the stream probably flowed this way originally, and then when it backed up or silted or cut through whatever it did or cut down, then it started using this lower flood route here, just like you're seeing in the floor where it's cutting through now and, and heading towards a lower level as the water cuts down. So uh, so anyway, we think that this could possibly lead back towards right around where the gumbo is that we're heading back towards. That dog and, and Gary seem to think there's a small 
that we should look for a small silted up passage on the right, right around where we can stand up right past the gumbo, and or right at the gumbo, and that uh, you know we may see the other end of this entrance potentially.